Laptop? Tablet? Laptop and tablet? The dream is closer than you think, and I'll show you just how to do it. Hey there! Welcome to another episode of DIY in 5. I'm your host, Trisha Hirschberger, and today we'll be going over how you can use your iPad as an entry-level laptop using the new iPad OS. No more will you have to choose one or the other. Why not both? To kick things off, what is iPad OS? It's a version of iOS 13 specifically designed for iPads, and it will be compatible with pretty much every iPad device except iPad Minis 2 and 3 and the original iPad Air. iPad OS includes almost all the features available in iOS 13, like system-wide dark mode, upgraded photo and video editing, updated maps, and more. It also, and most excitingly, grants the iPad the features to function as an entry-level laptop, so users can feel free to start using their iPads as laptop replacements for most use case scenarios. For multitasking power users, iPadOS supports a new home screen, which shrinks down the app icon size and allows you to fit more apps on each page. To allow multitasking, go to Settings, General, Multitasking and Dock, and make sure all the features you need are turned on. The two functions we're going to talk about today are Split View and Slide Over. Split View, which now allows you to open two windows, or spaces, as Apple calls them, <laughs> from the same app side by side. This is extremely convenient for editing and web surfing, or watching a video and taking notes. Another multitasking option is the Slide Over mode. Now you can add a stack of apps to slide over by dropping another app on top of the Slide Over panel that's already open. To switch the windows over as your full screen apps, simply use the small home bar below the open slide over panel. Swipe horizontally on it to switch between apps. Note that, like similar functionality on Android, not all apps support spaces. If you write or edit text on the go, you'll want to pay attention. iPad OS allows you to dislodge and shrink down the virtual keyboard, so it would be easier to tap with just one hand. Just pinch in on the keyboard to shrink it to be the size of the iPhone keyboard. The floating keyboard allows you to drag it anywhere you want. Quick Path for the keyboard will let you swipe instead of tap for typing. Just swipe from one letter to the next as they form each word. Anyone who uses SwiftKey and or 99% of those who've used Android can vouch for how fast swiping can be. Also, there are new editing gestures for iPad OS. To quickly select a block of text, simply start by swiping from the starting part of the text you'd like to select and swipe to the end and let go. The trick is to swipe quickly, don't tap and hold in the beginning. After you select text or an image, a three finger pinch will copy the item and a three finger outward flicking gesture will paste the selected item. To undo and redo text entry, just swipe left with three fingers to undo text and swipe right with three fingers to redo the text entry. Another new feature in iPad OS is updated screenshots. The old way of pressing the sleep and volume up buttons at the same time still exists. However, there's a new way to snap screenshots in iPad OS. You can use an Apple Pencil and drag up from the bottom left corner to the right into the screenshot markup screen. Same as the Command Shift 4 keyboard shortcut on MacBooks. With Apple Pencil, it's easy to annotate screenshots. Double tap any of the tools to change the thickness and color of your pen. A new plus button is also on the panel, and you'll be able to add some new elements to your screenshots with it, like a text box, any of your saved signatures, a magnifier to bring attention, etc. There's an opacity slider in the upper right corner. Slide right to decrease the opacity of your screenshot, and slide left to regain the full opacity. New in iPad OS, you're now able to save an entire web page as a PDF document on Safari. Once you select Full Page at the top, a document scrubber appears on the right side. You may use the scrubber to move quickly to a different part of the full page. And with the Crop tool on the upper left corner of the screen, you'll be able to crop out unwanted parts easily. One major headache for users previously attempting to use their iPads as notebooks was dealing with the file management. Good news is iPadOS offers a more computer-like file structure with the Files app. You can now share an entire folder rather than just individual files. You're also able to access files from external storage, like SSD, USB flash drives, or SD cards. 
The app now supports a new column view, which is similar to Finder on macOS, and provides a better look at folder hierarchy. This is great for a photographer or videographer who only brings their laptop on location to make backups of their cards. Now you can connect a USB-C hub like the Nucleum and copy footage from your SD card to an external SSD or hard drive. Files also support sharing folders through iCloud now, so you can share documents, images, or various files with your friends, family, and coworkers, and always stay up to date. So do you think you will be one of the early adopters who goes sans MacBook out into the wild armed only with an iPad? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments below. All of this feels a bit reminiscent of the early Note tablet days, which I personally enjoyed but never really caught on. If anyone can make a new technology stick, it's usually Apple. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I will see you next time with more DIY in 5.